Um, I want to go ahead and ask everyone to go around and say one word about how it was to write your story. Um, and I'm going to call on everybody. So <laughs> we're just going to do that. I'm going to go first. Um, flow. This one felt, they don't always flow, but this one kind of did. Um, so that's my word for today. Um, and I'll actually go ahead and wait. If someone feels inspired, they can jump in. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm done. That was my word was flow. We just need one word from everybody. Oh, that you just want one word. Oh. Yeah. How it was to write it. Oh, God. <laughs> Struggle. Okay. <laughs> Charles? I'm going to say easy. Uh, all right. Only, 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 because I, only, only because I think I know my story by now. So okay. Mason? Yeah. I'll say difficult. Yeah. I, I was spending some time thinking on a story that I kind of worked on the other week, but it's still kind of, you know, half baked. But yeah. Yeah. Mustafa, how was it for you? Um, it's, I, I find it to be, I find it to be challenging, challenging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with our time, I think it would be great if we could have a little bit of practice. Um, so I would invite someone to share, if you feel comfortable, share the story that you came up with us. And it can be, Mason, as you said, half baked, if that's where it is. It can be fully baked, if that's where it is. Any temperature and um, plating, we are, we are ready to receive um, and we can talk about it. I'll go. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm a guy that's from Hampton, Virginia. And so I just love homes like a lot. Um, you know, I felt really blessed to be able to serve our country. Um, and when I came back home, I, obviously everybody knows I've done a bunch of stuff with music. Um, but the older I, I get or the older I got, um, it was a, every role became more about how can I give back? How can I help? How can I make home better? Um, which led me, I think, organically to me doing so much stuff with the Hip Hop Caucus and then them in turn yeah. offering me a national Respect My Vote position. Um, and so at, even after I left them, being that the Hip Hop Caucus does so much more than voter registration, one of those things being environmental justice and all that kind of stuff, um, it made me think a lot about that in reference to our area with, um, you know, Reverend Yearwood used to say as, you know, he would go visit New Orleans that, um, you know, if there was going to be another spot that that got it as bad as Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, then then um, Newport News or Hampton Roads would be the next area. And so I, I thought about it a lot when he was making all of these speeches and, and putting that in there. And so I just felt after I did, uh, you know, worked with the caucus and, and did voter registration, I just felt like I had more to give. And protecting our environment and knowing how bad it gets around here in reference to flooding and, you know, knowing that renewable energy is, is, is on the rise and is really trending when you talk about solar and electric vehicles and you talk about wind turbines. Um, just wanting to kind of be one of the faces for that and, and working with really good people to kind of, you know, safeguard Virginia as best as I could with what I knew how to do. And so I think that was the path of after I left the caucus looking for a role that more aligned with where my passion was at. And so I made the choice to actively search out um, a role that could help me fulfill that. And that was um, coming to work for CCAN. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that I made that decision and it's very fulfilling work and um, I'm really, really passionate about it. And it's one of the few times in my life where I feel like everybody I work with is smarter than me. And so that, motivates me in a different kind of way, but knowing that I have a lot to give and I have, you know, a, a, a certain skill set um, definitely, you know, again, motivates me to want to be better, to want to do better and to speak and represent those who don't have the time or capacity to speak for themselves. And so, you know, now we're in this amazing space where, you know, it's not the best as far as all the different fronts that we're fighting these environmental crises, um, but at least that we're here and there are good people that surround us um, and there's an infrastructure and support all around us, um, people that want us to win on all these different fronts. And so that feels good. And so, you know, that, that is where I am, I'm at and that's how I'm feeling. And 
you know, just wanting to uh, get a touchdown in all the different areas with this role. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, thanks a lot, Charles. I really appreciate you sharing that. And I put this in the chat, but I'm thrilled you made that choice too. I'm glad to have you. <laughs> um, well then, speaking of challenges, choices, and outcomes, um, can anybody name a challenge that you heard in Charles's story? I heard a challenge that Charles wants to give back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the community. That, yeah. I, I can add one. I, I heard a challenge that maybe some of Charles' previous work didn't feel like it was having an impact at home for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then with this, with this desire to give back and with, um, with these different roles, trying to figure out how exactly um, what the future could hold and what would be authentic, what was, what was the choice? that was facing Charles. Uh, would it be finding a way to use the skills, the gifts he, he has developed mm -hmm. in his young life that he knows he has for that, for that desire yeah. to, to give back, to find a way to use your, 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 your talents? to do that for the uplift of the community. I definitely heard that. Um, yeah, Charles, is that theme same on brand? So then we have this, this challenge of how, Charles, how do you use your talents? This choice of, um, it sounds like I'm getting into this hip hop caucus work, I'm doing more in the community, but it seems like there's even more that I can do. So this choice of where do I go? What do I do? Um, so what was the outcome? Became an organizer with CCAN. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, yeah, that was great. And so that's... Oh, Mustafa is going by. Um, and so that's the that's the other thing. Um, in addition to having the challenge, the choice, and the outcome, we also always want to communicate and connect on shared values. Um, that's mm -hmm. one reason that we model these stories. So um, there's Charles, you shared so many inspiring values. Um, mm -hmm. Can we, can, what are some of the ones that we all heard? Can you, can you clarify your question? Yeah, like in your in your story, um, mm -hmm. you shared a lot about about your life and about the choices you made and the things that happened. Yeah. Um, what can we learn about your values from your story? Um, I think uh, I think a, a big takeaway is um, if you have a desire to to do something or to do more. Um, in my case. Um, you know, find find things or find roles that align with where you're trying to go or what you're actually trying to do or accomplish. Um, yeah. I also want to clarify for the record that there was a real choice, right? I love the role that I had. Again, the, the role before was uh, the National <laughs> Respect My Vote uh, organizer. Yeah. And so the choice was I was going to have to go and go all across the country and do it, which is an amazing opportunity if I was yeah. younger. But I want I actively did want to do more at home. Um, so that was I didn't I didn't really specify that, but that really mm -hmm. was the choice. Did I want to go on the road and set up all of these things all over the country? But at mm -hmm. but the conflict was there was there's a lot to be done here. And so I resigned from that position mm -hmm. so I could find something here. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that for you. Nice. And I it was such a it was such a short uh maybe you said that in your what you said in two minutes maybe three minutes max but it was loaded with values i would say and you know just you're mentioning that you had been in the military you served your country mm -hmm. 
um, that, and you mentioned your, the influence of, you know, this outside of your, your hometown, uh, national concern group, hip hop Cong Cong caucus, um, and then end up with the, uh, becoming the local organizer. Now I see that arc and I could think, okay, so serving your country to, to organize people to deal with climate change and climate justice is really, it's in the same camp with commit the commitment of your life to go into the military. <laughs> so it, yeah. it, I mean, it, that you said, you said all that, you said it humbly and it was in, you know, in such a short, uh, short piece of time, but you, you shared a lot of information yeah. and I found it very inspiring. And I, and it's, uh, that was chalk loaded with values. <laughs> yeah. It was chalk loaded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good values that I think, yeah. well, I, I, they definitely uh, resonated with me. And I think they will resonate with others. Yeah. That's wonderful. And that's, that's exactly why we do this. Um, yeah. As the, the stories are like Mustafa shared, stories are very, very powerful things. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm honored to be in this space with y'all. And um, I'm going to pause for a second and invite Mustafa because I see that you are now with us in a different capacity. Um, is there something that you want to add now? Or uh, I was going to go and ask for another story example, but is there anything else that you would like to do right now? Well, um, I just want to draw out one yeah. teaching or one Please. teaching point is Charles could have said, um, you know, that I used to serve in the military and, you know, I just decided to, you know, to work on climate, you know, because, um, because I've seen flooding in my community, right? Like a lot of times we spend time just doing an explanation, but not leaning into story. Right? And, I, and so what I'm, what, what I want to point out, particularly for everybody here is, a reason that you find sort of Charles's story inspirational is because he's telling a story and you're kind of seeing yourself and your own values in it. If we just kind of do like an explainer synopsis, it just doesn't cut it, right? Like we have, there has to be agency and authenticity and a narrative um, for, for people to be moved by it. That's the, we, we sort of, the comparison to like, we could talk about, uh, the statistics about all the harms of climate change. And you could do that in a speech, but then you could get Charles up in front of the same room and Charles could just talk about the arc of the choices that he's made in his life. And I would bet that more people would be motivated to act on climate by hearing the story rather than just sort of seeing the data and the facts. Uh, and I think I would take the, take the story sort of every day over that. So I just wanted to just lift up why, why I see that as, as why people are experiencing it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we, we do have time and I would love to have someone else share a story and we could, um, we can, we can uh, go through someone else's as well. I can share mine. I'm very open to feedback, so I look forward to it. <laughs> so <laughs> all of my life, really, I've never been able to vote. So while I was at home, you know, up to 18, I was too young, right? And then eventually moved to the US um, when I was 18 and obviously can't vote here because I'm not a citizen. So that was something I always wrestled with and I found it super frustrating that I couldn't, didn't feel like I had a voice politically. And something that I always had with my mom was she wasn't very politically informed. So she'd basically just vote how I told her. So I kind of had this like pseudo vote that I'd use. Um, so, you know, whoever, whoever I wanted her to vote for, I thought was the best candidate she'd, she'd vote for on my behalf. But then my dad would go ahead and vote for essentially the opposite candidate to whoever I had told my mom to vote for. So I'd be telling my mom to vote for these, you know, um, kind of like labor unionist, unionist, leftist people, and then, my dad had gone and vote for like the UK Independence Party, which was the party that really pushed Brexit. 
<laughs> so, you know, this went on for a couple of years and eventually I just got so frustrated with the fact that, you know, I, I really was having no voice in anything. So I joined the Liberal Democrats, which is um, a political party in the UK that's very like internationalist. And I originally joined um, because they were fighting Brexit at the time. And that was just, a, that was really my political awakening was when, when Brexit happened, I felt like I was being personally slighted by it because it was my future. Um, and you know, the old old generation was voting on behalf of the younger who had no voice, and we were going to be the ones living outside of the EU. So I joined the Liberal Democrats, and that was really the first time I connected with this like internationalist kind of side of myself. And then, you know, following on, obviously went to university in the US and saw the same things happening. You know, students weren't being listened to um, by the administration. People in general, young people, weren't being listened to by the political administration and we keep having these cops and nothing's happening and um you know we're all scared of what's going to happen and it seems like no one's listening so that really um struck a chord with me and you know eventually i was like okay well i, I don't see anyone around me um at my university taking action on this so i i, I need to step up and, and start doing something so that really led to me um getting into like climate work on campus and um, trying to amplify my voice as much as I can, despite, you know, still not having that vote, but realizing that now I have access to these new means of organizing and uh, making change that don't have to go through these archaic systems that just are failing um, at the moment. So that's kind of as far as my story's gotten. I think there's some pieces still to fit in there, but I hope it gives you a bit of an insight at least. Thanks a lot, Mason. Um, yeah, so let's let's go through it. Let's start with start with the challenge. What did what did we hear? He was um, Mason was frustrated um, by his inability to to uh, be a part of the political process, and um, that's what kind of spurred him into action. Mm -hmm. And seeing Mason expressed, he could see a lot of political problems and, uh, and could see looming climate problems yes. uh, from the vantage point of being a young person, being a student, uh, and, and, and seeing that, no, and, and in his words, nobody was doing anything about it. So he chose to take a path of doing something about it. Kim, you answered the next question too. Oh. You answered the choice. That's oh, great. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> that means that, it's a, that you're on it and it's a well-integrated story, yeah. <laughs> so there, the challenge is voice in a political process and a very, a very systemic one of, of climate change and of these systems that are even if he could participate in them, aren't really working this way anyway. And so the choice came, like you said, is, is all right, we gotta do something. Um, we gotta get involved in the ways the, that we can. Um, so let's, um, was, there, was there another choice in there that, um, that I might've missed? Um, Cause I, I got a little excited. Um, so we can step back and look for, look for other choices as well. choice to to join the uh you said the the democratic uh, yeah yes <laughs> it's the liberal democrats yeah liberal yeah. Democrats. what yeah. you said is the international yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think another you know choice that was in there that i just want to draw out was you know mm -hmm. coming to the u.s uh, yeah. i think especially in a time where um we're, we were under a trump presidency you know that was a yeah. uh, um, a big choice at the time as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then let's let's think about some outcomes. He has joined CCAN. <laughs> this is this is a big CCAN commercial, Kim. I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Mustafa, please. <laughs> so this might be, and obviously we can talk about this later, maybe, maybe in a few weeks' time. Um, uh, but um, but this might be sort of the, the portion where you feel like it's it's lacking a little bit um, in terms of like the outcomes because you're kind of sort of getting to that bridge, but. What I can extrapolate from what you've said thus thus far is um, that the that you having more sort of globalist values and thinking beyond just sort of the immediate circle and the immediate sort of future of people um, and thinking about how sort of the structures of these systems um, impact people across the board. I think about that just in the, the context of you starting out with um, with Brexit and uh, the uh, economic uh, constraints that people are feeling uh, and then that being tapped into nativist sort of values and worldview and you being in tension with that. So um, there are a series of choices that you are that you're seeming to make that have landed you in a or more globalist uh, values, which in my mind, climate change is a global, right, is a global issue. And unfortunately we don't have a coordinated, coordinating body that can enforce how we actually approach this on a global scale. So um, that's what I'm sort of thinking about walking away from it. <clears throat> Oh, very interesting. Ooh, yeah, wow, and I, yeah. And I was, and I was left, and I was also left thinking a little more about like, and how does it like end up with your father, right? Like that's like yeah. the having such divergent sort of like values um, and worldviews can be, can be challenging, even more challenging than like different religious perspectives, right? Like uh, as the studies show that there's more and more splits that are happening, even close relationships based on political affiliation and uh, worldview, even rather than just religious differences. And so I think, um, like, I'm, I'm kind of wondering where, where that's gone. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a couple of stories that are within the story that you told. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And thank you I, for that, yeah, a hundred percent. Thank you so much, Mason and, and Charles. Thank you. And um, I want to be respectful of people's time and know that we're right at eight. Um, so what I'm going to do is wrap us up for this particular session, but know that we will all see each other again, uh, which is a very good thing. Um, stop recording.